because with the, this part of it, I was just telling them that um, the, there was a question about when he was born and also where he was born. Um, the when he was born, we do think it was 1829, because that's there were three family Bibles showing that he was born in 1829. Um, but on his, at, <laughs> after he died, it showed 1830, and we're not really sure, you know, where that actually came from. But that being said, we do believe that it was 1829. There, there were no back in those days, like there were no official records. The um, that like now, if a baby is born in Fairfield, the town clerk writes it in her book, and it's there forever, right? And if you want to know, you just go and look it up. But it, it, this one. As far as um, back then it was concerned, they didn't have a family Bible. I mean, they didn't have the official records in the town, so people wrote their own things in their yeah. own family Bibles. Right. So like, if somebody was born, they wrote that in. If somebody died, they wrote that in. If somebody got married, they wrote that in. So all the important events, they, they kept their own uh, information about so look like and so they use this picture as you can see it was kind of falling down a little bit at the time they use this picture to build this house and but this building had been built for the family to live in by the Baptist Church as the parsonage because but however was Chester born here we actually aren't don't think so because of the fact that the building was being built at the time that he probably would have been born. So we just think that he was born in Fairfield, we just don't really know what the location was. So there were a couple of theories about it. Did they have addresses like they do now? I don't doubt it, right? I don't, not that I, mean, I know of. You know, this has a street address, yeah. right? But it wouldn't. Right, but, ne but back then. It said then, the Chester's on right. whatever road it was, right? And, yeah. And as close as you would get. Right. <laughs> So, so this was the this was what the original house looked like. Provided uniforms for all the soldiers. He provided weapons for the soldiers. He provided their boots and other clothing. He also made sure that they had food to eat. He provided that. He provided um, places for them to sleep at night. And even when they left New York, he would make sure that they had enough food you know, where they were going or that they would take with them so that they would have places to eat and sleep along the way. You know, like I said, pretty corrupt, but they, they liked it because they were getting a lot of money. <laughs> Who's that guy in the middle of the dice there? I think uh, that, says, I think uh, that's Grant. It says Grant on his home. Oh, oh, okay, oh, yeah. So uh, he, that, looks that, that a, he looks a lot like Ian. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, are you a descendant of Grant? Potential candidate. They have five people who are candidates. But however, I don't know if you know this, but if, if you, and I don't know if this is still true, but I'm guessing that it might be, when, when they have the, um, you know, when, when they do the voting for the candidates, they have to have a majority of the votes. And because there were five candidates, they weren't coming up with anybody getting a majority. He is about to go on his first vacation. It's less than four months after his inauguration. So he's not president for very long. When this guy, his name was Gateau, um, he was the one who asked for the job for ambassador to France. He comes into the train station and shoots Garfield. There was the Secret Service. He doesn't... He doesn't die. <laughs> he doesn't die right away, but he's taken care of by these doctors. These are all the doctors. They're taking care of him, and he lingers near death for 79 more days. So what ends up happening is he eventually dies. Um, what we think probably happened was back then, of course, um, as far as we know, they, the doctors were trying to get the bullet out. And what did they do? It's reaching in. Uh, yeah, Stuck no, their yeah. hand in. Did they know about that germs are passed on back then by mm -hmm. our... Can be, so with that, we think that 
had the doctors not tried to remove the bullet, we think that Garfield may have survived. We don't know. It's up in the air, but that was the theory, was that the doctors were fairly responsible for his death. So he does die. Chester Arthur had gone home to his house in New York City, and because he was very upset, because the guy who shot him, this Gateau, had said after he shot him, after he shot Garfield, I did it, and Arthur will be president. Well, guess what? Now Arthur is president, but he was very upset that this guy Gateau had said that because it sort of implicated him. Right. So that he, he, he was really worried that people thought that he was involved in it, which he wasn't. But, so he ended up taking his oath of office at his home in New York City. And, here's the best part of the story. After Garfield dies, Chester is now president, he makes the decision he is going to do what's good for the country as opposed to what's good for himself. And even though he was sick, he explored it, he went around, he went with some other men and they went there and so he thought it was really beautiful and really nice and he came back and he said, no, we're keeping, we're keeping uh, this national park. And so basically what Chester did by keeping Yellowstone was he opened the door for other national parks to be built. Not during his administration, yeah. but, well, especially like uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Many national parks came in under, under Roosevelt, but had Chester come back and said, we're not gonna have national parks, and actually mm -hmm. passed a law saying that the country wasn't gonna have national parks, we might not have any. Sure. So he basically, opened the door for more national parks to be come into existence. So thank you, Chester. Who did it? Was it uh, Lincoln who made Yellowstone National Park? It may have been, was it? Do you know? I'm not sure. I've been there, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, I thought it, maybe. It's time for the new election. In, in 1884, uh, the new presidential race is coming up, and he doesn't uh, pursue getting the nomination because he's sick. So the Republicans nominate James Blaine, and he was also on the good side of the Republican Party. However, Blaine loses to Grover Cleveland, who was the Democrat. And what's interesting is that Grover Cleveland was the first Democrat in, in quite a long time. There had been about four or five um, Republican presidents in a row 